Okay, good morning again. So let's start with this case. <coughs> it's a 29-year-old patient with a preoperative radiograph and uh, he had an impingement. Uh, there is really not a lot of osteoarthritis that you can see on this image. This was the postoperative correction, which we thought was okay regarding the camera section, in particular on the anterior super and lateral portion of the femoral head. But surprisingly, at the three-year follow-up, this patient didn't do well. There was some kind of joint space narrowing on the lateral side that we could already see at this time, and uh, some kind of uh, osteophyte formation at the lateral portion of the femoral neck. And the patient wasn't really good uh, clinically at that time. And the question is, um, could we have foreseen a little bit this or predicted this uh, not favorable outcome in this specific patient? Well, we know some negative predictor for the midterm treatment of impingement. We have, for example, demographic parameters like age, gender, body mass index. We have some intraoperative negative predictors like the chondral lesions, the labor and debridement, or also the depth of a cartilage lesion. We have some surgical related factors if you do an overcorrection or if you have an untreated hip dysplasia uh, together with a cam deformity. And we have some kind of uh, radiographic parameters, which is typically a joint space narrowing that you can see on a conventional radiograph. Now, interestingly, none of these factors um, is based on an MRI. Although MRI has been advocated as part of the standard imaging workup, and it's the, always the first question when we see those patients um, after having the conventional radiographs, where is the MRI? And many degener degenerative signs are visible on the MRI before joint space narrowing occurs. If you look on the extra on the right side, then you can see that there is a kind of uh, irregular uh, joint space here, but it's not a lot of osteoarthritis uh, going on. But if you look at the MRI, then it's very clearly visible that you have some degenerative signs regarding acetabular cysts. You have uh, some chondral lesions here. There is an osteophyte formation perifovular here and also posterior inferiorly. So we see much more on an MRI preoperatively, in particularly if you rotate this MRI or the cuts along uh, the femoral neck axis. So the aims of this study were to detect MRI predictors for an unfavorable long-term outcome and the appearance of their chronological, uh, or the chron their chronological appearance in the patients that underwent surgical hip dislocation for impingement. We did a retrospective case series of a consecutive series of 140 hips um, that have been treated for impingement with surgical hip dislocation between 2001 and 2003. So from those hips, we excluded all the hips that had previous surgery uh, that had post-traumatic conditions in, in cytopaining or of an old slip, uh, LCPD, uh, or it, even if they have a missing or an inappropriate MRI. And finally, we ended up with uh, 65 hips that had a full documentation, uh, including all radiographs and including a follow-up. The age distribution was typical for the impingement patients and also uh, the distribution of the cam and pins and mixed type deformities was, was quite typical. We did our standard uh, radial uh, uh, MRI sequence at that time still with a 1.5 Tesla machine and we analyzed 30 MRI, uh, 13 MRI features that we classified into three different uh, categories, subtle osteophytes, cysts and chondrolabral soft tissue lesions. And we only wanted to have features that are really easily uh, identifiable on MRIs and not something that you would think maybe this could be a chondral lesion or not. So all of those lesions had to be clearly visible on, uh, on MRI. And typically, they are not clearly visible on uh, conventional X-rays. And here are the factors. Regarding osteophyte, we uh, analyzed this uh, coxcomb osteophyte, which is an osteophyte at the supralateral portion of the femoral head neck junction, which looks like a coxcomb here. We have a posterior inferior osteophyte, which can be very subtle and sometimes not visible on conventional radiographs. The perifoveolar osteophyte, the saber tooth osteophyte, which is so the also the so called central osteophyte, an acetabular rim osteophyte. O osteophyte 
And then we analyzed several cysts, the classic herniation pit, and even if you can see the herniation pit uh, on MRI, sometimes it's not clearly visible on a conventional radiograph, in particular if there is no uh, cystic or fluid, cystic lesion inside, no fluid lesion inside. Some intralabral cysts, some paralabral cysts, and acetabular rim cysts, which have to be located at the rim of the acetabulum, in contrast to the acetabular center cysts, which are cysts which, that occur a little bit more at the central portion of, uh, of the lunate surface. And then we analyzed the chondral damage, and the chondral damage had to be really clear, which means some contrast agent running uh, in between the acetabulum and the femur, as you can see here. And uh, we, uh, we evaluated the extent of the chondral lesion in degrees, like a sector of the acetabulum. We also evaluated the labral damage, and it, again, it was only, only clear labral damages were identified. Again, it was quantified as the extended degrees, and we also quantified what we call a decentration, which means you have a contrast agent filling posterior or inferiorly, which can theoretically be due to a subluxation anteriorly, like in the splastic hips or the hips that we have just seen before during live surgery. Or if you have a def defect or a uh, joint space narrowing in the anterior portion and the femoral head migrates into this defect. We had two observers, two different time points, and found a pretty good inter- and intra-observer reliability for all those parameters. We did a follow-up of all those patients after 10 years. We evaluated them uh, clinically with the Harris HIP score and uh, with conventional radiographs using the Tony score. Then we did a union multivariate Cox regression analysis with the three known endpoints, so conversion to total hip orthoplasty, progression of osteoarthritis, and a poor clinical score, which we defined as a Harris hip score of less than 80 points. And finally, we calculated the box plots for the temporal relationship for each factor um, over time. Here are the results regarding survivorship. So for this subgroup of patients, we had a survivorship of uh, 73 degrees at 10 years. 21 hips reached an end point. Nine hips con were converted to total hip orthoplasty, where there were five hips with uh, a clear progression of osteoarthritis that did not underwent yet a total hip, and seven hips with a uh, bad clinical result. Here are the, uh, the factors that are really significantly um, predicting a poor outcome. Regarding osteophytes, we have the posterior inferior osteophyte, we have the periphobialar osteophytes, and we have the central or saber tooth osteophyte, which was one of the multivariate predictors here. We have the paralabral cyst, that is a negative predictor. We have the acetabular rim cyst, that is a negative predictor. We identified a uh, sector of more than 60 degrees of cartilage damage as a negative predictor and a label damage that spread more than 120 degrees, which is quite a large area. If you plot them uh, in terms of their temporal relationship, so which means if a patient comes in and the patient is 35 years old and he has three degenerative signs, then we would just add them together and see where exactly would all those 13 parameters occur. So these are all the parameters that we have um, uh, analyzed, and you can see that the univariate predictors are located uh, a little bit in the middle of the, the, the chronological range or at the end, and the multivariate uh, parameters, again, um, are even located a little bit more towards the end. So the later they occur, the more significant they are. You can do a kind of prognostic model for those uh, hips. So if you use the parameters and you feed it into uh, a, a, a statistical model, then you can predict the survivorship just based on those factors uh, that the patient has. For example, if you only has this uh, saber-tooth osteophyte, you will have a decreased survivorship or a decreased prognosis over time. If you have a cartilage damage of more than 60 degrees, it will decrease to about 50% uh, at 10 years. And depending on if you have any combination of those multivariate factors, you will have a really significant drop of your prognosis already at the age of five years after surgery. Now let's come back to this uh, case that I've showed you at the right at the beginning. And when we look at this preoperative MRI, then you can already see some of those negative predictive factors. So we have here 
the uh, rim osteophyte that is just about to form. We have a posterior inferior osteophyte that is very supple but is present. We have a chondral damage which spread more than 60 degrees of uh, the acetabulum. Uh, we have some kind of, uh, of uh, also osteophyte formation in, the, uh, in this area here, and here we have some kind of cystic alteration too. We have a labor lesion that we could identify, and it really spread more than those uh, um, 120 degrees. We have this coxcomb osteophyte that was visible, and we have the beginning uh, central osteophyte that was visible too. So there were actually more. There was more damage uh, preoperatively visible that you would think just based on the conventional x-ray. And this is the prognosis where if you count it together, so this patient really had a bad prognosis. And um, uh, we try to tell the patients at this time, uh, counting on those factors, that sometimes they can end up with an early bad result if they have some degenerative signs like that. So we have some limitations. So the chronological appearance is based on the patient's symptoms. So when does, does the patient come in? And then we had set up this chronological appearance and not their actual appearance, which means probably a, a, a central osteophyte could have occurred much earlier, but we would see it right at the time when the patients come in for the first time. We did, we'd had not enough data to differentiate between uh, the different uh, impingement subgroups, and we do not have a control group uh, with a natural course of impingement. So in conclusion, we can say the preoperative arthro MRI with radial cuts reveal important predictors for unfavorable long-term outcome of surgical treatment of impingement. Most of these factors are not visible on conventional radiographs or standard hip MRIs. And the preoperative ortho MRI evaluation is therefore strongly recommended on a routine basis, specifically um, looking at those parameters that we just mentioned. Thank you very much.